<laughs> oh my god, guys, no freaking way. Do you see what I'm seeing right now? Oh, disc break. Guys, the day has finally come where we have a hydraulic master cylinder and a disc brake on the moped. Let's go. Can your moped do this, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yes, sir. We got a hydraulic front master cylinder and the disc brake looking pretty up in the back. And the moped still rips as usual. Look at this, man. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Okay, guys, I really wish I could say that this install was easy. You know, it was smooth, no issues, but that is just not the case, unfortunately. When you're working with these mopeds, bro, everything pretty much takes a little bit of finesse and modification to get it to work for your bike. And that's the thing about these mopeds. There's so many of them made, and every single make and model is just a little bit different. And those differences add up a lot when you're getting parts that are made to fit four of them, and yours is one of the four. You know, you gotta, you gotta finesse it to fit. Little tune game for you. This thing was a process to put on, and luckily for you, or unluckily, whichever one, I recorded the whole thing, all right? When I got this kit, obviously, the first thing you gotta do is put the rear tire on the wheel, okay? So that's what we did. After I got the rear tire on, I threw it on the bike just to fit it up, see how it was working. And this is basically where we started to run into issues. I noticed that it was pretty far off from where it had to be. It was not really aligned with the center of the frame. So I just figured my frame was bent and I was gonna have to bend it. So this is really the major thing that took me the most time with this install. To be honest right now, I am kind of confused at why this wheel is not fitting how it should. It's almost so far off that it seems like the frame can't be bent this much. It's spinning, but the amount of overlap that the frame has right now on this wheel is pretty crazy. And right here, it's spinning freely right now, but it's so close to touching. And you can totally tell that when you compress the suspension, it's gonna hit the edge of the frame right there, which is not good. My first attempt at bending it was a pretty big failure, but I was heating it up with a heat gun and trying to just flare the metal out a little bit to make some space for the rear tire. This rear tire is a lot thicker than the old one than the old like bicycle tire that was on it so i figured you know better tire a little bit of difference is gonna end up hitting the frame so yeah i used a heat gun and i tried to bend the frame out to clearance it a little bit but you know surprisingly it didn't really work that well Basically, this wheel still doesn't have enough clearance on this side. One of the most popular things that people do when they start to mod these things is cut this rear fender. I think I'm gonna cut it somewhere around here, so I'm gonna need to take this rear light off. All right, I kind of mocked up where I want to cut. I think I'm going to try and just cut along the top of this line here. I want to leave this bolt hole here so that I still have a mounting point to put the tail light. If you're cutting anything, guys, you want to use protection, okay? Shout out to Detour Sunglasses. These boys hooked me up. Oh, safety goggles. If you want a pair of these, the link is in the description. Boom, look at that. It actually looks pretty good. I had to keep on stopping because it was so loud and I live in an apartment complex. I don't want to be a nuisance, you know, I can hear people upstairs like opening drawers and stuff and I'm down here. <laughs> You know, it is what it is. Someday I'll be in my own garage with a house and all that. But that went better than I expected. The Dremel works really good and it just flows right into the bike. I wanted to fit it up with everything to see if the caliper would fit and how it would all work. So that's what we did next. I just put all the parts on the bike. Basically, this is the bracket that's gonna hold the caliper for the handbrake. As you can see, when the axle's not tightened down or when this is under a lot of braking force, this thing can move. You have to drill a hole through this swing arm and put a bolt through it that goes through this slot that keeps it locked to this position so that when there's braking forces on it, it's not gonna move up or down. That bolt's gonna hold it right there and keep the whole bracket stationary. I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and get the handbrake on here and mount it up on the handlebars and then go from there. Oh my god, look at that boost up, bro. Yo. Knee knocker in the streets. Ah, stay straight. Oh, we got it down. Knee knock. Ah! Oh, it's so hard to keep those straight, bro. So that's basically where we're at now. I put everything on the bike. It was fitting up pretty good, other than this rear fender, so. <laughs> the next issue I was working on fixing, bro, was straightening out this rear fender. And this is where it gets ugly, okay? Because I was really, <laughs> I was out of pocket, bro, in what I was trying to fix this. It makes me feel kind of dumb to look back at it now and think about what I did, but I just wanted the rear fender to move over like a little bit so it would line up with the tire. I just wanted to bend it a little bit. So I started prying on it, bro. I was using my whole body to pull on this thing. I even got like a piece of wood and was smacking it with a hammer, like a sledgehammer, trying to just shock bend it into place, you know? But uh, surprisingly enough, it really didn't do anything. This is where my uh, novice mechanic levels really come into play here. I was like so confused and bamboozled by this thing that I hit up my buddy 717 Squirrel on Instagram. He's one of the best moped riders out there. I sent him a picture of it. He looked at it for two seconds and basically said, I don't think the hub is centered. Try switching one of the wheel spacers. And I was like, no, what do you mean to switch one of the wheel spacers? But I looked and I had the wheel spacers on wrong. Guys, I don't think you understand. This video seriously got delayed like a month because of this issue and I didn't have the wheel spacers on right. That's the only thing that was wrong. <laughs> so as you do, I accepted defeat. I switched the wheel spacers and it fit perfectly, bro. It fit perfectly. There was no issue. It was my fault. <laughs> and I'll take that, bro. That's why people always ask me mechanical issues about bikes or mopeds or dirt bikes. I'm like, bro, do not ask me. Do, don't ask me. I don't know. Like, trust me, I'm one of the last people that you want to ask about mechanical advice. <laughs> All I ever do is ask other people and get knowledge from other people. People, so all that was left then was to bleed the brake and get out on it and ride. We got the rear caliper on the bike. We got the master cylinder mounted on the bars. As you can see, caliper is looking good. Master cylinder, oh snap. It's gonna be smooth, but this thing definitely needs to be bled. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I got this RBF 600 mo tool. I'm about to bleed this brake and then we're gonna test it out. So the footage I'm about to show is from my first ride on it and my initial impressions of the disc brake on the Pook Maxi. Yo boys, we are outside on the moped. We got a fresh back brake set up, bro. New chain. Oh man, this thing is hitting. Should I cruise through the Harley bike night? I think I should. <laughs> Places a moped should never go. Let's talk about it. Damn boy, what you think? They're clean, bro. Something's telling me I don't belong though. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Look at all these boys. Yeah. Oh my God, this is my crowd right here, bro. Catch me here in about five years, 10 years. Hell yeah. Honestly, what do you think they think about me? What do you think they think about the two stroke? Oh, they got a band and all that. Look at my man's catching blocks too. I don't know, man. I'm liking the cruisers though. Should I pull a wheelie for him? Clean beans, baby, clean beans. All right, now we're out on the open road. I gotta get used to wheeling this thing again, man. The rear brake in this tire, this fatter tire in the rear feels really nice. I can't lie. Oh man, but I just love how this brake feels. You can really just finesse it now and it's always gonna be there. It doesn't kind of change. Thing about disc brakes is, depending on how hot they are, you gotta pull harder. So if they're not too hot and you pull it, it'll catch nice. But when they start to heat up, you gotta pull it harder and harder to get the same amount of braking. <laughs> Obviously, that's not a good thing if you're doing wheelies. Oh. 
Pretty much right now, this thing is straight up how I wanted it to be when I started this build. It's just not the most powerful thing, but it's reliable and it's stunnable. It's got good brakes, strong chassis, nice suspension. It can handle bumps, it can handle my weight, it can handle me throwing it on the rear wheel all the time. It's got a little bit wider tires for the streets. It's really just like the perfect bike right now. <laughs> as it bogs super hard. <laughs> I have a feeling this dead ends and I don't want a dead end, but maybe I could look at something cool at the end of it, so. <laughs> what? <laughs> give me that bike, give me that bike. Man, y'all be crazy, bro. Drunk as hell. Give me that bike, give me that bike. Look at this, uh, ooh. I mean, this is kind of what I wanted to see, I can't lie. Ooh, I'm gonna take a li this little picture opportunity up here. I dig the view. Gotta do it before any people come though, or else it'll be awkward. Mmm, I like, I like. Give me that mic, give me that mic. What? <laughs> no, it's mine. I put my hard work and effort into this thing, man. What did you do? No, I do nothing. You weren't there when I was struggling, man. All right, let's see if these menaces are still out here. Oh, they are. I'm gonna have to make a break for it, bro. What if she hits me? I'm scared, man. I'm gonna have to make a second confronting a bike thief video. I am satisfied with this thing, bro. It is a ripper. I like the sprocket. I like the rear brake. Maybe get a new master. I think that might help a little bit, but honestly, this thing is starting to feel better throughout riding it today. Like, I honestly didn't think it was that good, but as I've ridden it, it's starting to get a little bit stiffer, I think. It's just building up pressure. If you're picky, you could probably get a nicer one that'll lock up the back easier, but you don't really need to lock up the back. You just need to finesse it, and that's exactly what this lets you control. Front brake's feeling good. Whole bike's feeling good. Gotta tune it a little bit more for the summer weather, but guys, this thing is minty. I'm liking it guys. I'm liking it. I do got to say that this kit that I put on is made by a guy on Instagram His Instagram is John Dooley. He makes them and sells them that came with the master cylinder the calipers everything These are custom-made kits and I will say although it took a little bit of modification It's really not his fault He's building them for Tomoses for pooks if you want a kit That's a really good starting point and a really good almost plug-and-play rear disc brake for your pook maxi I think he makes them for Tomoses too. Hit up John Dooley on Instagram You guys can get yourself one and put it on your bike just like I did in this video.